Oh, don't stare. How would you look after eons in some ghastly crypt? Your people are rather prone to death. Mine are not. Yet when I emerged from my completely unjustified imprisonment, I found them gone. Our culture forgotten. Any trace of the world I knew all but obliterated. I must even hide my true face beneath an ever-shifting mask for fear you savages will attack me. That is how I wander this strange world. Trying to uncover the truth about a history you primitive people never even knew existed.
It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. Well now, aren't you a curious sight? If I'd had a mask to hide my bones as well as yours, maybe I'd still be walking around today. Where'd you get it? There can't be many curios like that in the world. No, you're here to be collared and shipped like a beast in a cage. Any other pile of bones and they'd suspect, but you... Not even your yowl gives you away. I've never heard such silken tones from a naked skull. So powerful that you've been overpowered by clowns in red capes and a glowing necklace. Well, colour me impressed. Still, you'd best keep that mask on. The living don't take kindly to seeing their future staring back at them. And now you are silent. If only all humans were so thoughtful. This again.
rubbish. Rubbish. Empty. Such a dear lending it to me. Room. Or was he already here? Why, you're looking a bit more chipper. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Why? Because we're at sea, of course, and have been for several days. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits, and if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Good gods, there's, there's been a murder here. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and follow the source that did this. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course.
Finn was killed by Sauce. If a Magister could do that, they wouldn't be a Magister. It looks more like a passenger managed to slip their collar. And the rest, well, you see the evidence in front of you. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Everything's spick and span. Nothing left to do, really. It seems as though there's a pattern in the blood flow. That can't be natural. Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. There's been a murder. A Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. You surprised? Small ones, they will find out. A young Magister stands pale and... Did the murderer take him into this room? Or was he all there? Oh, no, no, you can. Be good, you scallywag. You are um, husband. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we?
You presume right. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You take care, though. Nope. Trying not to find anything out, either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. What are you trying to hear, anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp if I'm. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen Magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander, many, many, many... Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced Magister draws one finger across his throat. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is, somebody gave him a bigger sword, and now he's Johnny Big Pants. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. No. The dead man. Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. The joy. I've heard a lot. Wonder if we'll get to meet the ringmaster himself. Easy now. I might think the same, but Vic here will blow a blood vessel. What are you conspiring about over there? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name! Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. I'll tell you if you can keep it I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Good. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. She shakes her head. Game for one, I'm afraid. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Don't worry, honey. It is... She looks you up and down, with the merest hint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. She smiles contemptuously. Just a kitten in a corner, aren't we?
good, you scallywags. Never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Nick. About right. I always knew you'd turn out dropped to bed next. Your kind always hung closest to our divine. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with him. You one of them? A Divine Order loyal? They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide you. Be good, you scallywags. Boring. It was one of them. I know it. Would you put a knuckle in it? I'm trying to concentrate. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable, surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Vic. That right. I always knew you'd turn out rotten, Ben Mest. Your kind always hung closest to our divine, like wolves around a campfire. Well, you've got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with him. I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Hmm. There's some discoloration, as well as a rather disconcerting lack of tongue and gums, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Your kind always hung closest to our divine, like wolves around a campfire. Well, you've got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of the ship with him. And of course, a cook who can't taste is about as useful as a dog in a chess game. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? Yes, I can tell from your vagabond chic, a bag is as good as a shirt kind of style. I shouldn't be getting my hopes up. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Never thought you'd ever... The very basics then. I suppose that's a start. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can groom, but you have the taste buds of a dung beetle and the fashion sense of a monkey in a clown suit. That won't do at all, see? 
I'm sad to say I must deny you the opportunity to be my slave. Ever so sorry. I know, I know, but you just don't have what it takes. A good slave's made of sterner stuff, I'm afraid. Still, hone your skills, and one day you may just qualify for a position in a lesser household than mine. You keep dreaming, you hear? Can we just skip to the part where I read? A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? The ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates. The groaning of wood from floor to ceiling. The boom, crash and crackle of... And... The fellow cocks his ear, listening. 